Thank you, Chairman DeFazio and Ranking Member Graves and the members of the committee for the opportunity to testify today. Together, we're tackling the worst public health crisis in over 100 years and a financial crisis deeper than all previous economic disruptors combined our industry has faced in its 100-year history. In the absence of a federal plan until recent days with the Biden administration, I want to recognize the airline industry for working with unions on safety measures such as required mask policies for airports and airplanes. Receiving backing from the federal government on these mask requirements makes all the difference for flight attendants, passenger service agents, and TSA officers who are tasked with ensuring travelers comply. It has been difficult and combative at times without clear instruction to the public. We applaud FAA Administrator Steve Dixon for his strong statements and emergency order to make clear there will be no second chances for passengers who fail to comply with crew member instructions that keep everyone safe. Violators will face the federal penalties of up to $35,000 and imprisonment. The zero tolerance policy is in effect through the end of March and we encourage the FAA to extend it. Aviation is critical for vaccine distribution and the people on the front lines of aviation need priority. We encourage the federal government to set up vaccine uh, clinics at major airports and make it easy for airline crew members to access both their first and second doses. This will max maximize efficacy of the vaccine and prevent wasted doses. Until we can contain the virus and fully open our economy, the airline industry will continue to operate at massive losses. The good news is that with the support of this committee and Chairman DeFazio leading the way, we created the first federal relief program that is truly workers first, which covered 2.1 million workers under the CARES Act through September 30th of 2020. When it was not extended, furloughs, separations, and no paid status began on October 1st, affecting hundreds of thousands of workers and those still working. The late December emergency relief continued the same requirements of the original CARES Act PSP. No furloughs or layoffs and reinstatement of pay as of December 1st through March 31st. No cuts to hourly wage rates. Maintain and restore service to all communities. Caps on executive compensation for two years beyond the relief period and a ban on stock buybacks and dividends. This workers first plan we hoped would be a template for relief across other industries. It looks much like the successful programs we've seen in Europe, except that in this country, it's even more valuable because healthcare is also tied to employment. We need to extend the PSP through September 30th of 2021 with a $15 billion in payroll support program. And we thank this committee for promoting this as part of the COVID relief package Congress is working to secure for Americans in the coming weeks. The, pro the program is the best use of the public's money because it uses the payroll systems that airlines and contractors already in place. Workers continue to pay taxes, supporting their cities and states tax base, continued social security contributions, Medicare and more. Healthcare, pension, retirement, uh, pension and retirement contributions, sick leave programs and other protections remain in place. When the program lapsed, furloughs caused certification and security credentials to lapse too. Nearly three months of furloughs caused a four month recovery of the credentials to get everyone back to work. Without an extension, this problem will grow exponentially. Airline workers are getting back in place to support vaccine distribution and recovery. We support one in 14 jobs in this country. PSP supports the best public health decisions, no cost cutting strains on safety and health policies. In the long term, airline balance sheets are already loaded up on debt. Debt heavy balance sheets will lag recovery and create downward pressure on good jobs and hurt consumers too. There are endless arguments about why PSP makes sense on a government balance sheet, but this is really about the people. The flight attendant who sought this union job because she had Crohn's disease and needed regular preventive care in order to live a normal life, but who without it becomes so ill she can't even look for another job. The flight attendant who cares for elderly parents and whose sister and husband lost their jobs during COVID, but have children to provide for. And so the entire family moved in together and he became the sole provider thanks to PSP. The flight attendant who was forced to work more during the furloughs because in a cost cutting environment, productivity is driven high. She was displaced from her home base and sent to spend more time on an airplane to get to work out of Philadelphia instead of Phoenix. She lost her life due to COVID just this past week. 
furloughs disproportionately affect women and people of color and force an older workforce to leave home more often to work with greater risks of serious effects of the virus. Aviation has a long history of collaboration among government, industry, unions, scientists, and consumers. We can beat COVID and emerge stronger. And let's do this together. I look forward to your questions. Thank you.